<laughs> Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and uh, since I got my Loki motors, I've been hinting that I had a blaster that I really need to get around to getting internals in, and as you saw in the thumbnail and the title, it is in fact my Desert Pigeon Mark VIII that I was sent years ago. Years! I think I still lived in Tacoma when I was sent this, uh, which is tragic that I've never gotten around to putting the internals in it because it's such a lovely blaster. I mean, look, look, look! It's got my logo in the grip on the pigeon. It's fabulous. Uh, and it's really, really cool. And uh, now I have good motors that I feel very confident in putting in here. Uh, the Loki motors with the Flywheel of the World wheels should get me around 120 FPS. So I'd be able to use this at, say, Afterworlds or in my arena, which are really the only places I'd be willing to use this, given how scary it looks. Um, but it, it's so gorgeous, I gotta build it. Now this one has a couple of features over the earlier one that I was sent. This one was sent fully functional, and as you can see, it's not quite as fancy looking. It's not quite as tactical or as cool looking. It doesn't have quite as much detail, and it's got a lot more orange, which is a nice thing about it. Uh, one of the features that this one has that that one doesn't is if you turn this little tab down now when you pull the trigger, the slide reciprocates to make it look even more real and terrifying, or you can flip that up and it doesn't. Having it down does increase the, the trigger pull uh, because there's a, a sl another spring on this so you're not pulling two return springs, but it's not much. Um, it also has this, the tack box, and I'm honestly not sure what that's for. Uh, you would think it would open up to reveal the battery housing because that would be really handy if opening this gave you access to your battery, but it doesn't, which is weird. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it gives you some Picatinny rail down here, you know, if you wanted to put a flashlight or a sight or, or a foregrip, I don't know, mount a, uh, a hair, yeah, who knows, whatever you want to do, you could. Uh, I would need to find the pin that goes in there to keep it from flopping open. But anyway, we're going to open this up and we're going to wire it, which shouldn't be too difficult because it is essentially a strife. I believe it is a two-stage trigger like this one, so partial pull will rev, full pull will um, push the darts into the flywheels uh, should be fairly, fairly simple. There is also potentially, I believe, some kind of a heel safety, uh, which is neat. That is pretty schnazzy. We will see when I get it open. Um, I have no idea how to actually open this, so I am making this up as I go, but I'm assuming it is similar to that one. Well, there it is. I got it all back together. I don't have any leftover screws or anything. I'm kind of surprised. Um, I'm gonna clean up a little bit. I'm gonna load some magazines. And we're gonna test this thing. It is unfortunately dark, so I will have to wait to take it to the range, but you won't because editing is magic. Right. I'm here on the range with my Desert Pigeon Mark 8, though as you saw in the intro, it is not alone. I brought my original Desert Pigeon and a couple of other uh, semi-automatic magazine-fed dual-stage flywheelers, all in the same kind of family of blasters, to, uh, to compare, and because it's actually a lovely day and I wanted to plink. So, uh, I'm gonna plink! We're gonna start with the Mark 8. And uh, I am engaging the uh, recoil, cause it's fun. And I'm gonna see if I can actually hit anything. Apparently I hit a bottle during the opening. I 
don't remember saying that. Um, so we, uh, we go play. It's, uh, it's noisy. Not quite accurate enough to hit bottles, but uh, it goes where you're pointing. I like that. I like that. Let's see if its uh, predecessor doesn't need better. Here we go. Two for two. That was lovely. Not quite as powerful. I don't know what motors are in here. I may upgrade them to. Uh... Ugh. No. Oh, no. Battery bits getting in the way. Get back in your housing, you wretch. Uh, I may upgrade them to Loki's, but I kind of like that this one is decidedly quieter and lower power. So we'll see. We'll see. Let's try another one. So the 3D printed one is my concept pistol, which is much svelter, solid design, very nicely engineered. This one was designed by Devil Z Nerfworks, I believe. Fabulous. It takes talons. But despite that, they managed to make the grip not too horribly chonky. It's a comfortable grip. And the one that I was sent is gorgeous with the, the kind of copper filament and the orange anodized screws. Just the little details that make a difference. But let's uh, see if I can hit anything with it. Oh, I think my uh, 3D printed leaf spring is wearing out. Yeah, it's uh, a... <laughs> oh. Oh, rob complete. Uh, yeah, that 3D printed leaf spring has uh, seen better days. I will need to replace that. Luckily, it's just a matter of printing a new one. Or I could probably heat this one up and put it back in shape. Anyway, this one is delightful when it works well. Uh, compact uh, compared to the chunk. The, that one's, it's big. But, I mean, you know me, I like big blasters. All right, let's take a look at another 3D printed one. We have the uh, Flywheel of the World Photon, which is just a spacey, lovely looking blaster. It, however, does have the chunk grip. Uh, even for my hands, this is, this is a big grip. And uh, it uses Talon magnets as well, and there's limitations to what you can do with making a grip fit Talon mags, but uh, yeah. But, originally I had some serious problems with it. The trigger actually broke under the weight of the springs that were in it, between the trigger return spring and the double slide return spring that were both as heavy as the trigger spring, so it had three times the weight on the trigger pull than it could have possibly needed, and the trigger ended up breaking. So I removed both of the slide return springs and replaced it with one super, super light spring. It's got almost no weight, and then reduced the weight on the trigger return just a little bit to make up for that. And uh, now... <laughs> it's just a delight to shoot. Uh, I really, really like it. I particularly like that even though it's got a lot of black on it, this thing looks like a, a Star Trek phaser. It's, uh, it's very spacey and lovely, and I like that. So, yeah, very nice, very nice design. I like it. And finally, in an almost slightly unfair capacity, we have the Nightingale, which is injection molded, which makes it better in almost every possible way for a, a variety of reasons, but it's... It's really, really nice, and I hear there are there will soon be select fire kits for it. I'm gonna need at least two of those. So, uh, yeah, here we go. What? I'm not out of ammo. Oh no! Come on! No, oh, no! My follower has jammed. I fixed it. Now am I out? No. Okay. I, I think I got it. I don't know. Just, oh, delightful. This one has Loki's in it. And uh, so quiet. I mean, listen. As I'll 
I don't know how well you're gonna be able to tell the difference. How very dare you? How well you can tell the difference in the sound, but. <coughs> didn't have the grip safety. <laughs> Same motors, same wheel. Well, not the same wheels, but same motors. This one rattles. This one. No. Anyway, I like it. It's chunky. It's noisy. It's beefy. It fits my idiom. I'm a, I'm a plink a bit more because I got a little bit more ammo though. I just dumped it all on the ground. <laughs> Few more plinks to plink. complete. Thank you for watching.